Let's continue through the docs for Godot 4.2 and talk about the different scripting languages that you can use. Thank you for supporting content like this. If you like content like this, please like and subscribe to help us keep going. Your kindness is very much appreciated. In the last video, we took a deeper look at instances in Godot. We briefly mentioned that programmers can actually instantiate those instances from code. But how does the code work? Are there specific programming languages that you can use in Godot? There are actually four officially supported languages. In this video, we are going to talk about scripts that you can attach to nodes to extend functionality. And the cool thing, you can actually mix languages using various nodes. Scripts attach to a node and extend its behavior. This means that scripts inherit all functions and properties of the node that they attach to. We will talk about inheritance in a future programming video, so don't worry about what that means for now. I've gone ahead and added the icon with a camera attached to it. Beef it, how would you make the camera shake? It's not a native feature built into Godot, so we would have to make it ourselves. I already have a script here, but don't worry about how to write it just yet. We will get there in due time. We mentioned that Godot supports four scripting languages, those languages being GDScript, C Sharp, and via GD extension technology, C and C++. You might already be familiar with these languages if you are coming from engines like Unreal or Unity, but which one should you pick when programming a language? Well, it depends, but personally, we like GDScript. It feels a lot like Python, which is great. It's also beginner-friendly. Alternatively, you might be familiar with C-sharp, as it is another great choice and is easy to work with. This is perfectly fine, but you will need to configure your project to open code in an external editor or IDE, if you choose to use it. Many like VS Code for an editor, but there are many options. We will go over how to configure VS Code for Godot in a later video. Let's look at each language's features, as well as its pros and cons. Starting with GDScript. GDScript is an object-oriented and imperative programming language built for Godot. It's made by and for game developers to save you time coding games. We will talk about what these programming concepts mean in another video. The advantages to using GDScript is that it is native to Godot. It's literally built for it, which makes for blazing fast compiling and loading times. And because of this integration, you get more with code completion. And signals. There are a lot of types just built right into the language as well. I mentioned that it is kind of like Python, which makes the syntax easy to learn and makes for short, clean files. And threading might not mean much to you yet, but it supports multiple threads as efficiently as statically typed languages. There is no garbage collection, as this feature eventually gets in the way when creating games. The engine counts references and manages the memory for you in most cases by default, but you can also control memory if you need to. This is a more advanced computer science topic, but it's good to know. And speaking of typing, it supports gradual typing, which means that you normally don't have to specify what type of variable is, but you can with type hints to type check it. Variables have dynamic types by default, but you also can use type hints for strong type checks. Being as GDScript feels like Python or Lua, why doesn't Godot use Python or Lua directly? It actually did in the past. But Python has issues with threading, and it was easier for the developers to maintain their own scripting language, as they could tailor it to the engine's needs. Next, let's look at .NET and C-sharp. A lot of people like C-sharp, which was developed and maintained by Microsoft, as it is a mature language with tons of libraries, and Microsoft has donated in the past for its support in Godot. C-sharp offers a good trade-off between performance and ease of use although you should be aware of its garbage collector, as you don't get to manage it yourself. To use it, you actually have to use the .NET edition of the Godot editor. I am running Linux, so it's not the same for me. We won't get into the intricacies of C-sharp in this video, but you should know that it's somewhat less flexible than GDScript, as it is a statically typed language. Also, projects written in C-sharp using Godot 4 currently cannot be exported to the web platform. To use C-sharp on that platform, you may consider Godot 3 instead if you prefer c -sharp. And lastly, let's talk about C and C++. GD extension allows you to write game code in C++ without needing to recompile Godot, which is a time-consuming process. We will have a video on GD extension in the distant future, so we won't talk about it now, 
but C and C++ are fast. Very fast. GD script isn't as fast as C or C++, but most GD script calls and functions are written in C++ in the engine, so you won't notice a significant difference. The main drawback is that these languages are harder to program, but the advantage is that they are efficient. If you are a GigaChad and already can write in C or C++, go for it. You can use any version of the language or mix compiler brands and versions for the generated shared libraries, thanks to the use of an internal C API bridge. While GD extension is the best choice for performance, you don't need to use it throughout an entire game, as you can write other parts in GD script or C sharp. When working with GD extension, the available types, functions, and properties closely resemble Godot's actual C++ API. And that will do it for this video on scripting languages. If you enjoyed this content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And thanks for making it all the way through the video. Please join us in the next one. See you next time.